In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brother, let us acknowledge our sins and so we to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess, to all my God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my, fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask the Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. And on earth, peace to the people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we give you glory and honor. Glory to God in the highest. sanctification, made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith, may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory, and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up Mount Sinai, as the Lord had commanded him, taking along the two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people, yet pardon our wickedness and sins, and receive us as your own. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all for ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your holy glory, praiseworthy and glorious above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look into the depths from your throne upon the cherubim, praiseworthy and, and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and is to come. Alleluia, Alleluia. St. John. God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the only Son of God. the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. This morning in the cathedral in Tucson, a priest was ordained. We have one candidate that became a priest this morning. And he will be stationed in Casa Grande as the associate pastor. And if we ever have penance services again, you'll get to meet him. But if we don't, well, he's just another person. <laughs> but it's interesting that because we are having two priests retire this year. And last week, one almost died. So we would be down three. But he's starting to make a comeback. Father Tominga is very afraid of turning his parish over to a younger priest. And so he fights to stay alive. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting because he actually should have been dead, but he's fighting. Um, it's and Father Tominga is a character because God only calls characters to the priesthood. <laughs> he doesn't call your basic average person. But Father Tominga is an actor getting parts in B and C and D movies. Never got into an A movie. So, you know, we're glad he's coming back, but again, uh, we're seeing the effects of less and less men going into the priesthood, so please keep your prayers up for that. But at least we got one, so that's a good thing. You know, in our world today, especially in this country, we have so many people who believe that religions are all basically the same. In fact, it's becoming common to run into Catholics who've adopted this viewpoint that all religions are the same. It is considered a tolerant, open-minded point of view. But in reality, it's just the opposite. It is the most closed-minded and intolerant viewpoint someone could have in regards to religion. Human nature is the same where we find human beings. And human nature has the same basic needs and problems, biological, emotional, and spiritual. And every religion tries to address these needs for happiness and meaning, for example. And every religion tries to solve these basic problems, sin and forgiveness and life after death, for example. In fact, that's how England became converted to the faith the first time, is because the missionaries came in there, St. Augustine, not, uh, not the uh, one down, the big one that always wrote down everything he said, but another one went up to uh, England and the king was wondering whether he should let them come in and evangelize. But his, one of the wise men that he has around him to tell him what to do said, you know, sire, we can have answers to all the problems except one. He said, what happens after we die? And he said, so if they've got a solution, let's listen to them. And so England became Christian. So all religions have to deal with the same human conditions. Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, all that. That's why people try and claim that all religions are the same. And we get some of this from misinterpretation of the documents of Vatican II, because it says that in all religions is some basis and foundation of truth. It doesn't say the whole truth, it just says some. And so people have taken that to mean all religions are the same. So they all deal with them in different ways, these kind of things. Atheistic religions say, oh, there's no God at all. Pantheistic religions say that the universe is part of God and identical to God. So everything is God. 
polytheistic religions say the divine realm is full of numerous and competing gods. If you're a Hindu, you have 330 million gods. That's a lot of prayers. Monotheistic religions like Christianity believe in one all-powerful eternal God. But the differences don't stop there. Inside each of these groups are different variations. Each variation presents its own view of God, about the nature of God, the nature of salvation and happiness, and how salvation can be obtained. And so, that's why it's closed-minded or laziness to simply say that all religions are the same. It's a refusal to show any respect at all to what religious people really believe. A prime example of this is the great Christian mystery of faith, which the whole church throughout the world celebrates this weekend, the most holy trinity. Of the world's three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, only Christianity grasps the inner nature of God, that God is actually one in three, one divine nature, three divine persons. And each of these divine persons possess the fullness of the divine nature. What the Father has, the Son has. What the Son has, the Holy Spirit has. What the Holy Spirit has, the Father has. And that's why we say, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, not in the names of, is because it's one divine being. That's why we say in the creed that the Son is one in being with the Father, God from God, light from light, and that the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and Son. With the Father and Son, He is worshipped and glorified. We only worship God. This is what people misunderstand. We only worship God. We can adore created things, but we worship only God. So when people say you worship the Blessed Mother, you worship saints, no. We adore them like they adore their grandchildren or their children. Well, if, that's, if it's that day, if we would have. The Catechism tells us that this is the central mystery of Christian faith and life, the Trinity. Jesus revealed it to us. Now, it seems like a contradiction, and that's why Jewish and Muslim theologians often tell us, how can the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit be fully God and yet distinct persons? This is hard to understand because our minds can't grasp it completely. Part of the reason is you and I use the word person differently than theologians and philosophers use the word person. It's two different things. But in English, we only have the one, so once again, we can't grasp it. So the fact makes the Trinity ring true is that our minds can't grasp it because it shows that no human mind would have been able to come up with it. If we could explain the Trinity, that means one of us made it up. But since we can't explain it, we didn't make it up. And it shows that God, the creator of the universe, exists in a way that we little creatures cannot understand. And that makes perfect sense. God should exceed our ability to understand him. If he didn't, he wouldn't be much of a God. He would be one of us. Like in Norse mythology, Odin, Thor, Loki, or in Greek and Roman mythology, Neptune, Pluto, Venus, that kind of thing. But this is just one difference among many that means all religions are not the same. And to pretend that they are is closed-minded and disrespectful. It's because we Christians recognize that all religions do not offer the same explanations and solutions to the human condition. That we as Christians are firmly, that we are so firmly committed to religious freedom. And it may sound contradictory. You know, wait a minute, we're for true religious freedom. Well, wait a minute, what about evangelization and all that? Let me explain. The Catholic Church teaches that religious freedom, the freedom to believe, worship, and live in accord with one's religious beliefs, is a basic human right. That is because the relationship with God is one of the most basic human needs and duties is the basis for the human mind and soul as food and water are for the human body. Christians defend this right not because we think all religions are equal, but because we recognize every human heart must be free to choose and to search for God without being forced. If all religions were the same, then religion would have no, religious freedom would have no meaning. Religion itself, in fact, would have no meaning. 
It would be nothing more than a personal hobby with no real truth or relevance for society. And that is exactly what the lawmakers are saying and want. California has already chosen that path. They do not want to, they want to take religion out of our social life and keep it behind closed doors. But that policy backfires. It makes atheism into the required public religion, violating the human right to religious freedom and liberty. So religion is not limitless. It's not only the human right. Because no one has a right to religion as an excuse for injustice. Some people do. The Muslim extremists are using religion as a right to injustice and violence. Pope Benedict says, no. No religion can ever become a vehicle of hatred. It can never be used in God's name to justify violence. So our religions are not the same. They give different answers to life's biggest questions. Today, we profess our faith in the one true God, the most holy trinity. And we need to thank God for showing us the true answer to all these questions, Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world, he gave his only son. So not only would we be saved and know the son, so that we would know the Father and the Holy Spirit as well. So let us renew our commitment as true Christians because of this mystery, so those around us who are still looking may be able to find Jesus Christ in us. God bless you. I believe the power of the the maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God of God, God of God, true God of God, true God, begotten and made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. Church, that we may be one in our faith to the triune, triune God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For this world, that it may be saved through the Son sent by the Father, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who do not accept the true God, that they may come to the peace and love of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For ourselves celebrating this Eucharist, that we may help one another with the love which reflects the Trinity, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the dead, that they may rejoice forever in the glorious life of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, especially Marcella Zastrow. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Eternal Father, receive the prayers of this people, filled with the Holy Spirit, and offering Christ your only Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, Almighty Father. For the praise of Holy Church. by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, and Eternal God. With the only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. What you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son, and of the Holy Spirit. So in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, we might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and the equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son and Christ. Number three, you're indeed holy, O Lord, and all you've created rightly gives you praise. With your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and work of the Holy Spirit, give life to all things and make them whole. Never cease to gather a people to yourself, from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We believe in the Lord, and the Christ's resurrection, until you come again. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death, you will reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and through his Holy Spirit may become one body and spirit in Christ. May make of us an eternal offering to you, to maintain an inheritance with your elect. Especially most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Michael, St. Corona, and with all the saints. On this constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. For the sacrifice of reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family we have summoned before you. Your compassion, O merciful Father, gather yourself while your children scatter throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, all are pleasing to of their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, who we stow in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress. As we the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
let us pray. In receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul, as we confess your eternal holy trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And before the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Jesus. Have mercy on us. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Have mercy on us.